Now there is a viewer who did send us this video. Listen very closely. About five seconds in, you can hear that sonic boom. That is it right there. Again, that sound heard from Orlando over to Tampa. Look at that timestamp up on the top left. A lot of people saying they heard it around 517. There it goes again. And this is a camera from the backyard in East Orlando of Matthew H. Who on Twitter. Shook the house. You live in the Wyoming Valley. It is possible you heard a large explosion this morning. No one was hurt, and there was no damage caused by the explosion in Luzerne County. It literally shook the house. Mysterious and loud booming noises in Malden. Folks who live there tell us that they hear this several times a week and that the sounds are actually scaring their children, scaring their pets as well. But as WBZ's Mike Sullivan shows us, no one seems to know where the sounds are coming from. Noises that go bump in the night don't often get you. It's a loud boom, boom, boom. But they sure can startle and frustrate you. You would think it was like the 4th of July every other night. Don Washington lives near Bell Rock Memorial Park in Malden with her two grandkids. These loud, unidentified booms can be heard between the park and the Malden Everett line. And sometimes you think it's like maybe a tire backfiring or something like that, but how many backfired tires happen in a week. Another neighbor at the park told me she turned her TV off last night, fearing. Even more people are complaining about it on social media. <coughs> it's super annoying, especially with a dog and a baby. <coughs> if everyone is hearing it, why aren't police stopping it? The past, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine days, uh, I see no record of any responses to that area for uh, loud noises. For the last several days, neighbors in and around Stone Oak have been trying to solve a mystery. Residents there are reporting a mysterious noise they're hearing late at night. Some describing it as an explosion, random fireworks, or loud booms being heard in the late night hours. We asked Ken's Five reporter Alicia Neaves to see what she could find out. Alicia? ECs have been working on this all day, been making a lot of calls to try and crack this case. Exactly what are neighbors hearing between 10 at night and 430 in the morning? Able to track down the noise, neighbors went to next door to find answers. One resident writes, does anyone hear the thunder like noises coming from close to Oak Meadow? Several respond yes, saying it sounds like blasting, fireworks or booms. So we started digging. First, we looked at a map of the area to see if there was any obvious location that could be making a racket that was keeping neighbors up at night. We started with Camp Bullis, thinking maybe they were running late night drills. This is Alicia Niaves calling with Ken's Five. But a quick call to Joint Base San Antonio, they let us know they're not making a peep after dark. So we've done a lot of digging, but we still have not solved this noisy mystery. A mysterious sound heard through parts of Fort Greene, Brooklyn, has been driving some people, we are told, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's maddening, it's unsettling, and, and it's also just this mystery because nobody seems to know what is causing this strange humming sound. What is sound? You're hearing what residents of this neighborhood have been hearing off and on for what they say is too long and too disturbing a time. It's kind of a, excuse my sound effects, uh, but it almost sounds uh, unnatural, and for that reason, it really gets under your skin. What is that sound? You feel like your teeth are about to fall out. You feel like your, your window panes might shatter. It's, it's really an unnatural sound, and it's unnerving. She says she hears it on her block intermittently, day and night. Just when you think, oh, it's gone, then you're like, wait. Do I? Do you hear that? Yeah, no, I hear that. It's also problematic because it, it's so eerie sounding. 
you know? And so it's difficult to ignore. I liken it to like some sort of alien invasion. As, as you're walking around, uh, even in the middle of the night, you hear this hum off in the background and you wonder what, what could that be? You know, I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're only landing in the middle of the night. Is it one of our secret technologies? And the answer is no. How do we know that? Well, for several reasons. First of all, I had access to all those programs and those type of programs. You don't typically test these type of secret aircraft in and around areas where you're doing active maneuvers. Um, you, you tend to test them at secret test ranges like Area 51. You certainly don't endanger uh, pilots' lives by testing this type of secret technology. So we very quickly realized it wasn't our technology. The second option is, is it foreign adversarial technology? Is it Russian? Is it Chinese? We've been seeing this technology for decades. And when you compare that to where we were, let's say, in the late 1940s and 50s, we were just ex exploring and learning the secrets of the atom. We were unlocking its secrets. We had just entered the jet age, and we hadn't even been into space. And yet these, these technologies were outperforming anything and everything that we have. So if this was some sort of foreign adversarial technology that's been around for 70 years, this would be considered probably the worst intelligence failure my country has ever experienced. The last option is, well, if it's not our technology and it's not some sort of foreign adversarial technology, then, then whose or, or what is it? What exactly are these if they're not ours? The most famous uh, case that we had was in 2004. It involved the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group. And there you have uh, one of the escort ships with the latest uh, Spy-1 radar capability beginning to pick up some sort of weird anomaly. And both are now looking at some sort of object, we'll call it an object, coming in from 80,000 feet and within, within less than a second, now hovering 50 feet over the water. They get vectored to, to the area, and the first thing they notice is some water roiling on, on the ocean. He describes as this white, and it's about 40 feet long. There's no windows, no, no real wings or control surfaces, no obvious signs of propulsion, and yet this object is witnessed now by four separate individuals and two separate aircraft bouncing back and forth almost like a ping pong ball right over the surface of the water. So as he goes down and, and to take a closer look at this, all of a sudden, this thing begins to react. As Commander Fravor's coming in for a better look, this thing begins to maintain its distance, and all of a sudden, like that, it's gone. It absolutely disappears over the horizon within, within about a second. Now, what's even more scary, which is in about five seconds afterwards, this object now is picked up once again on radar 60 miles away. When you look at this video, a couple things to the trained eye you'll begin to notice. First of all uh, is the, the telemetry that you see on the screen is altitude. Now, when an aircraft banks 90 degrees, you hear what they say, wow, it, it, this is compelling and the thing is rotating. Well, not only is it rotating, but it's not losing lift. So aircraft that have wings, whenever you're gonna do a bank and you're gonna turn, when you do that, you lose lift and you lose altitude. And yet this is not losing altitude. And as you hear them say, it's going 120 knots against the wind, right? So they're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. We're not talking about a balloon. At 25,000 feet, we're not talking about a, a quadcopter or a drone and we're not talking about an aircraft. And if you look at that, it doesn't really look like an aircraft, does it? It looks, looks peculiar, it looks almost like a, like a top. And then furthermore, what you don't see on the video, but you hear in, in, in the exasperation of the, of the pilots, is that there's a whole fleet of them. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. And so what's important to know here, is sometimes not just what you see on screen, but it's the complete picture. It's sometimes it's what you don't see, and also, what you can hear. When you said there's a whole fleet of them, what did they look like? How were they maneuvering? What were they doing? What separates these from anything else that we have in our current inventory is quite simple. There's five observables that associate, when you look at something as a UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena, as being truly unique. That's instantaneous acceleration, hypersonic velocity, low observability, Transmedium travel, the ability to operate in multiple environments or domains, and last but not least, in, in the vernacular, would be anti-gravity. The ability to fly with no wings, control surfaces, uh, no obvious signs of propulsion, even, frankly, not even a cockpit.
Unfortunately, all I, I can say is that it is my uh, belief that the United States is in possession of, uh, of exotic material. And unfortunately, that's, that's, that's about all I can, I can say at this time. Whether or not these are real, this is a fact. This, we're here, folks. Uh, the question is, what is it? Where is it from? What is its intent? Uh, and, and what can or should we be doing about it? Dude, these three lights are just chilling. There were like six of them earlier. And, a, and a, they were making a big triangle. Yeah, cool. Well, I don't know what they are, but they're just sitting there. They're not doing anything. Uh, there's one below it. No, I don't know if he's gonna go up or not. Up oh, there it is. It's finally. It just popped up. Dude. Oh, there's a fourth one on the right. It's about to light up. You see it blinking? direction is that? That's like north? Huh? <laughs> Dude, they're just sitting there! That's a play. Are your eyes are better than mine. Are they blinking or are they just one light? Whoa, see that one? That one just popped up. See that one? The, the fifth one on the right? There were three up top, then one came on the bottom, and now there's one on the right. Alright, I'm gonna pause this. Alright, stop. They're blinking? Wait, do I have my glasses on? I have my glasses right here. Dude. <laughs> Finally in my fucking life, my 38 years, I get to see something crazy like this. Oh, I can't wait till people post this shit on Facebook. Yeah, one just flew off to the left. One just flew off to the left. Stupid phone. Come on, focus. They're like golden in color. The one in the middle is kind of red. Yeah, the one in the middle is red. The one like on the, the one on the middle is like yellowish. And then the one on the, uh, the north is, that's a plane. Mm. Uh, that's a plane right there. And then the one on the north is really white. <laughs> there's definitely freaking, there's planes and there's helicopters out there flying around. Definitely a lot of activity up there, though. Dude, it's so cool. Oh man, I know we're supposed to go home, but I don't want to go home. <laughs> I'm supposed to sit here and watch this. No, there's two. Huh? No, the third one's moving north. Yeah, it's just kind of floating away. It's following the other one. The other one's way over there. Shit, maybe we can find a different place. Spot to look 